welcome back to my channel. So I've been looking to adopt or rescue new mice for a couple of weeks now and I've not been having much luck. I have looked at or contacted local rescues and they either don't have any mice at the moment or they have a waiting list for the mice. I did apply for some mice from the RSPCA, my most local branch, and I never heard anything back. It's been about two weeks so I think it's safe to assume that I'm not going to end up getting those mice and I'm not going to get response. I don't know if they just didn't like my application. I did message and ask if the mice I applied for were still looking for homes and they said yes so no idea what happened there but I resorted to looking on selling sites, things like pre-loved and pets for homes just to see if there's anyone that is trying to get rid of their mice and there are a couple of adverts but this one has caught my attention. So it says per two mice you get a cage and these are the pictures of the cages there is this one this plastic mess and then also this one which i think is a pets at home cage and if you know anything about mice neither of these are suitable or acceptable for mice so that was the first thing i noticed but if we continue reading it says per two mice you get a cage with bedding food and a wooden toy so just one wooden toy you will also get earthworms okay and uh, two types of treats these are only to be given on occasion yep you will also get dried daffodil leaves um The recommendation is a few leave or if they have broken a bit of daffodil leaves a day. These are all females and there are two cages you can choose. Oh wow, I don't know which one I, I would rather have. Um, they are shown in pictures, same with the mice, they are great pets for kids, they are cute and friendly. Um, there is a lot going on here so let's go.
Okay, so I got the mice. As you can see, it's been about two weeks now, actually, since I went to pick them up. I just want to give them time to settle in and to get to know them, but so far they're doing really, really great. So I just thought I would talk about some of the initial concerns I had with the original advert. There was no daffodils in sight when I got there. I think if they were being fed daffodils or even daffodil leaves, then they would most likely be dead so I think that was a typo I think she meant dandelions and dandelion leaves that seems a lot more likely and accessible you can just get them from your garden so I think that's what she meant otherwise they probably wouldn't be here but I wasn't given any daffodils or any dandelions or any treats the only thing I was given which I did ask for specifically was a bag of their old food they were fed on Jolly's pet store mouse mix or something I've still got some of it left but I was using this to slowly transition them over to the food that I feed the other food isn't the best I wouldn't feed mice on this long term it's mostly just like peas and like those bits of corn there's not really much substantial stuff in it so that's the only thing I got so in terms of the two cages she had, I did persuade her to just give me the mice and not try to sell me the cages. When we were talking over text message, she did seem more interested and was giving more details about the cages and the mice. I'm sure she also wanted to find a good home for the mice, but that seemed to be more of the priority. But she did give me the mice without having to buy either of the tiny and suitable cages, which I'm really glad about because one of them, the smaller of the two, luckily they weren't living in that, but I'm sure at some point they probably were. This one was 45 by 30 by 45 centimetres. This is not big enough for anything. Not mice, not hamsters, not gerbils. So I was kind of tempted to buy that just to kind of destroy it, but I didn't. The other cage, which was the one they were living in, is the Pets at Home Mouse and Dwarf Hamster Cage. Large. Um, and this one is slightly bigger. Still not great by my standards and that is 37.5 centimetres in height, and then 55 by 47 centimetres on the base, so not massive, not really much bedding was in there. I think they only had like one wooden tunnel or something, and then just all the plastic stuff that cage comes with, the little house, and the wheel was tiny. I'm not sure how many inches this is. I'd say maybe a guess, five, six inches, so not great, really glad to get them out of that cage and into something slightly bigger. They have been in a temporary bin cage just for the moment, but they are gonna go into this cage behind me, this enclosure with the other boys, and I can't wait for them to have space and more bedding and enrichment. I think they're really gonna love it. I did ask her just because I was curious what her reason was for getting rid of them or wanting to find them a new home. And she just said that she was wanting a pet that she could sit with and would sit still on her lap and cuddle with her, which, most mice are not going to do that, so that's why it's really important to do your research beforehand before getting a pet, just to know exactly what you're looking for, but I hope she finds what she's looking for in a pet instead. I, on the other hand, could not be more happy with them. I think both of them are really amazing mice, and I can't wait for you to find out more about them. But both of them are really, really good mice, and I'm not sure which one of them does this, but one of them has a really weird quirk. Anytime I give them vegetables, whether it's peas or carrots, I'm not sure if it's because I've not really had that kind of thing before, but anytime I give them this, they will take this and then put it into their water bowl and not touch it. So they've been drowning all of their vegetables the past two weeks and not really touching them. But both of them are really sweet, really confident, weirdly. Both of them will equally come up to you and take treats in the cage and stuff. So that is really good. They seem quite confident given the fact that I don't think they've really been handled very much, but they're both really sweet. They've both been really enjoying having any enrichment, whether it's something as simple as just hay and making little nests with this, or foraging toys, and they've really been enjoying just making tunnels and destroying everything, so it's been really nice to see them just being normal mice, doing normal mouse things, and anytime I sit in my office and pack orders or work, they're both there staring at me, so they seem to be adjusting really well. So, some more things about them. They're both around six months old. Not sure how accurate that is or how old they were when they were purchased. And she did buy them from a pet store. I think she said she got them from Jolly's pet store, so they're not gonna have the best genetics, but so far they seem mostly okay health-wise. And now, of course, I want to tell you their names and talk a bit more about them individually. So, let's start with this one. So this is the first girl. This one's name is Wren. 
And at first, when I first saw her picture, it was a very blurry, vague picture. I thought she was just a red-eyed Siamese, but she's actually a Siamese pie. She has a little white patch on her back, and she would say is the most outgoing of the two, in the enclosure at least. She was always awake when I go in there, always busy, always doing something, rearranging things, or nesting, or running around. She is very, very active. She's not really that hand shy in the enclosure at least, you can reach in and move things or put things in and she's not bothered at all she doesn't run away when you do that and she really likes to take more paste off your finger she's been doing really really well and weirdly i think out of most of my mice she is the one that probably has the most potential to actually sit with you and be a cuddly pet ironically so i could not be happier that i've got her and she is in our house she is just so so sweet and i just feel like she's going to be one of the special ones I always bond the most with tiny white mice and I think she's not going to be an exception so she is really special I just have a feeling because she's just so bold and outgoing aren't you? You just don't care. So that is Ren, spelt W-R-E-N, one of those names I've been saving for a while. She is boggling right now. One of those names I've been saving for a while because it's one of my favourite names to use with pets and I've been waiting for a special one to use it with so of course she had to have it and I'm sticking with like the nature bird theme name so this is Lark, she's a long haired black pied and she's the more shy of the two weirdly once you've actually got her out on your hand or your lap she seems a lot more confident than Ren so they seem to switch it up but generally when she's in her enclosure she doesn't come out as much she doesn't come out to see you as much but she has been taking treats and she will take treats just as much as Ren does so both of them are doing really well when it comes to taming. I'm not trying to pick them up as much just yet, just working on getting them to take treats. And we've got into a really good habit, haven't we? Her previous owner said that she was a bit of a squeaker or a screamer whenever you tried to pick her up, um, and that's why she didn't handle her much. I have not really experienced that. The only time I've heard her make a noise was when I had to trim her nails, and that did set us back a bit when we were bonding, but... She had very, very overgrown and getting to the point of being ingrown toenails on her back feet. Some mice have this, some mice do need help with trimming their nails. And weirdly it's always been my black mice or my black pied mice that have needed that for some reason. But she had very, very long toenails on her back feet to the point where I was making it really difficult and uncomfortable for her to walk. She does walk very slightly with a weird limp, whether it's just something that she has learned to do with ingrown toenails. But... I spent 40 minutes trying to trim them and she didn't like that of course so that did so oh my god she's grooming herself why are you so cute you are so cute are you grooming yourself good girl but after like 40 minutes of her wriggling and squeaking I finally managed to cut both of her back toenails and of course she didn't like the entire process but it had to be done didn't it I'm so sorry so that set us back very slightly with bonding because I didn't see her for like two days afterwards. I thought she was going to hate me forever, but we're okay, aren't we? It wasn't that bad. She does also have a bit of a crazy tail. It kind of has a mind of its own and it bends upwards when she walks. I'm not sure if this is just genetic, whether she genetically just has wheel tail or whether it is because of the tiny wheel that she had in her previous enclosure that was like five inches. I'm not sure. Um, it could have also been broken, possibly. There is a slight notch halfway up that does make it look a bit crooked, so either one of those is a possibility, but she has a crazy tail that has a mind of its own. So that is Lark. One of my favourite things about her is the zigzag on her face, and she does remind me very slightly of my previous mouse, Pebble. They look a bit similar, but she's very, very cute, aren't you? You're so cute. So those are my two new girls and although they weren't the right pet for someone else, I'm obsessed with them, I love them, I would have loved them even if they just acted like the prey animal that mice are and they'd been terrified and wanted nothing to do with me because that is not the reason I get mice, I would have loved them regardless but the fact that they're so confident and they're trying and they're so outgoing, even though they've probably not been handled that much, just makes it a bonus so I hope you guys have enjoyed meeting them and you'll grow to love them as much as I do. Both of them are really, really special, and I'm just so glad that I got them. So the next step, of course, is to have them in this enclosure behind me. I cannot wait to see them interacting with all of the toys and enrichment. I feel like Ren especially is gonna use every inch of space 
and every toy in there because she's so active and just seems so appreciative of anything you give her so I cannot wait to see that but before that of course they have to meet my other mice my three neuter boys they're going to be going into intros pretty soon so fingers crossed that goes okay I will film the entire process and that will be in this month's monthly vlog so you've got that to look forward to but but I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing them and finding out their names and their personalities. Of course, there will be in future videos coming up very soon, but I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this one. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!